For chapter four, we're actually going to be solving uh, using three different methods, solving systems of equations. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to kind of overview each method at the beginning. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll break into each section where we'll kind of focus on each one. So uh, the first section focuses on graphing. And so when I look at both of these, uh, the idea is we want to figure out, I can do better than that, we want to figure out uh, where this system, these two equations, where they cross, what point they have in common. So to do that, we need to graph this and put it in y equals mx plus b. So this first one is not y equals mx plus b. To get the y by itself, we would add x. And if I do it to one side, to the other, to get y is equal to x plus 1. The second one, to get the y by itself, we would subtract the x. And we would get the equation y equals negative x plus 3. Okay, so once it's in that form, we graph using the skills from the previous section. So for the top one, we would start at a y-intercept of 0b of 0, 1. 0, 1, we would plot a point. And then from there, we would use the slope, rise over run, our slope here. If there's no number with the x, that's the same thing as a 1x. Or as a fraction, 1 over 1. So from there, we would rise 1, run 1, rise 1, run 1. And that is that equation. What was it? Uh, y equals x plus 1. The second equation, negative x plus 3, has a y-intercept at 0, 3. That's once again the b. So I go 0, 1, 2, 3, and I plot a point. And then from there, we'll use our slope, which is negative. No number with the x, so negative 1 over 1. From the y-intercept of 3, we go down 1, right 1, down 1, right 1. So that's basically step 1, get both equations of y equals mx plus b, slope-intercept form. Second, we graph it. Third, our solution is a point, specifically the point where these lines cross. So visually, I have to look at this and go, well, we have an x-value of 1 a y value of 2, so this point is going to be 1, 2. x equals 1, y equals 2. Do not write the answer like that. Make sure that, and this is my, my fourth step, make sure that you once you find the x and the y, that you write your answer as a point, x comma y, so it would be 1 comma 2. So just to recap, <clears throat> this was basically step 1. This was also part of step one, getting everything in y equals mx plus b. Over here was two, graphing it. Third, we found where they crossed. And fourth, make sure you write that as a point. Okay? So you're going to see that graphing has its limitations. Um, so it's like, then why, why do we waste our time doing it? Well, a couple reasons. Uh, it is really important that you understand that even when we solve this algebraically, our solution is a point, specifically the point that these lines have in common, okay? The point where they cross. Um, and then secondly, a lot of people are intimidated by the algebra. A lot of people are intimidated by these types of equations and all that. So if I was wanting to present, if I had two equations that, um, and I wanted to figure out where they cross, I was presenting that to people, this right here would be a much better visual representation to show where they cross and help people that are more intimidated by numbers um, understand and approach the math. Okay, all right, so let me, yeah, that's fine. Before we go on, we should be able to check the solution. Our point is 1, 2. If this is right, we should be able to plug the point in, and it should work for both equations. So our first, first equation, uh, y minus x equals 1. We had a y value of 2 an x value of 1. So this becomes 2 minus 1 equals 1. 1 equals 1. That checks out. Our second equation was y plus x was equal to 3. Make sure I did that right. Or was it x plus y? I don't want to lie to you. Uh, no, it was y plus x. And so once again, I plug in the same numbers for the x 
and the y. And we can verify that 2 plus 1 equals 3, 3 equals 3. So the idea is that that works for both. That's the point they have in common. So that is the solution to that system. Uh, the homework will have you uh, several times just checking points. That's an important skill. Um, I'm going to focus more on solving these. <clears throat> Method two. Now technically this won't show up into the next section, but I like this one example, how it's really easy to show all three. So I'm going to go through all three. Let's start with this. <clears throat> to use method two, it's called substitution. We want to get either x equals or y equals. So I'm going to look at both of these equations, and I want to solve for either x or y. Well, we already kind of did that in the last section. We took the top one. We solved for y by adding x. And we got that y equaled x plus 1. So that is step 1. I need either x equals or y equals to use substitution. I'm going to tell you right now, we're going to have three methods, and so I don't want you to get overwhelmed. Uh, when will we graph to solve these? When I tell you. Pretty much we won't graph these because graphing has its limitation unless I specifically ask you to graph it. When will I use substitution? Generally, I don't use substitution unless this first step is already done. If I already have an x equals or y equals, then it's set up for substitution. We'll talk more about that in a future section. Um, so what do I do now? Well, y equals x plus 1. Step 2 says we can substitute this equation, this x plus 1, into the other equation. Well, for what? Well, it's what y equals. So I go to the other equation, and I go in place of that y, and I replace it with x plus 1. What does this do for us? Well, I was just dealing with two equations that each had two variables. Now I have one equation with one variable, and I can solve it. Uh, before we just go on, though, why can we do this? Why can we just throw that y, the x plus 1, in place of the y? Well, definitely it's what y equals in the first equation, but why is it what y equals in the second equation? Why can we put it in the second equation, right? The best answer I can come up for this is to go back to the graphing, right? What is our solution? Well, you know, the solution is that point, okay? But it is the point that they have in common where they have the same x and the same y. So basically, we are trying to find where the x and the y's are the same. So if y equals x plus 1 in the first equation, we are finding where the y's and x's are the same, then y equals x plus 1 in the second equation. Because we are finding the same x and same y, we can substitute one in place of the other. All right, so that's just a side note. Uh, how do we solve this? Well, these are on the same side, so they combine to give me 2x plus 1 equals 3. Minus 1, minus 1, 2x equals 2. Divide, divide, and x equals 1. All done, right? Well, no. That was just step 2. See, this was step 1, getting a variable by itself. Step 2, substitute and solve. But this is x equals 1 is not a solution. Remember, our solution is supposed to be a point. What do I do with that 1? Step 3 take that one and we're going to plug it into either equation. Why does either equation work here? Because this is the point they have in common. So I should be able to plug this into either equation y plus what was x? We just found that x equaled 1. So y plus 1 equals 3. And by solving for y we get that y equals 2. Remember I said the other equation would work as well, right? That was y minus x equaled 1. y minus 1 equals 1. Adding 1 this time, y would still equal 2. I can use either equation. Don't do it twice, but the idea is either equation gives me that same y value. So now we got an x, now we got a y. Am I done? Well, technically no, because you got to remember our answer is a point, specifically the point that these two lines have in common. So what we do is we write our answer as a point, x comma y, where the x value is 1, the y value is 2. And that would be our fourth step. 
So go ahead and store this in your in your banks, you know, for now. And when we get to the next section, this will be basically section 4.2. Let me show you the last method. Method 3 is called elimination or combinations. This works really well when the, when the variables are set up to eliminate. So we'll look at some later on that where they won't eliminate. But this is my first step. Get the equation so a variable eliminates. We do that through multiplication. So write this down. This will save us notes when we get to uh, section 4.3. Okay? Um, that's already done. See, if I look at these two equations, like one big addition problem, two of the variables are ready to cancel out. We have a negative x and a positive x. They are the same number, but they are also opposite. One is positive 1, the other is negative 1. So if I were to combine these, those x's would cancel. The y's would combine, and 1 and 3 would combine to make 4. So technically on this one, step 1 was already done. It will not always be done, but the x's were ready to cancel. Combining and canceling is step 2, but we're not done because it's combine, cancel, and solve. So you don't forget to solve this. So now we get that y equals 2. Is that our answer? Not necessarily because I still need an x. So I need to go y minus x equals 1. Either equation will work. 2 minus x equals 1. Ugh. Subtract the 2. Negative x equals negative 1. Divide by the negative 1. And x equals positive 1. Did I have to plug it into that equation? No. You can substitute this number into either equation. So I could have probably done y plus x equaled, uh, what was it, 3. And so it would be 2 plus x equals 3. Subtracting, x would equal 1. I think that was a little easier. But the idea is it will work with either equation. Last step on this. <clears throat> Make sure your answer is still a point. What is that point? 1 comma 2. So this is a quick introduction to all three methods that we're going to be using. At this point, I'm going to focus on 4.1, which is specifically graphing. Um, but why do we use graphing? To understand that our solution is a point. And specifically, when I graph it, I can share it with people and have them not be as intimidated. Um, but it also, we can see visually, the, when I graph these two lines, this is the point they have in common. All right, let's go ahead and finish and knock out the rest of 4.1. Example two, I generally don't like to graph unless it's already in y equals mx plus b. They're not always going to be like this, but sometimes they will. So taking this, these are both in y equals mx plus b. This first one has a y-intercept of 5 and a slope of negative 3 over 1. So from that 5, we go down 3, 1, 2, 3, too far, over 1, down 1, 2, 3, over 1, down 1, 2, 3, over, if I really want to get ambitious, over 1. That should be plenty of points for now. The next one is negative 3x minus 2. So that has a y-intercept of minus 2. And it has a slope of negative 3. Negative 3 over 1. So I go down 1, 2, 3, over 1. That's not really convenient to keep going that way. So we talked about before that if the slope is negative 3 over 1, I can also go backwards. I could go up 3 and negative 1. Both of these numbers are still negative 3. And negative divided by a positive is the same as a positive divided by a negative. What does that do visually? I can go 3 down and 1 to the right. Or I can go 3 up and 1 to the left. 3 up, 1 to the left. 3 up, 1 to the left. 3 up. One to the left. Okay. Oh yeah, I did that. It's just sloppy. So what's our solution? Remember, the idea is we are trying to look for the point they have in common. We just graphed two lines that have the same slope. That means that the lines are... So what will the solution be if there's parallel lines? Well, they will never cross, so they will never have a point in common, which means there will be no solution. The 
book will call this a contradiction. I'm fine if you write no solution. Parallel lines will never have a point in common, so there will never be a solution, never be a point where they cross. What about this one? Let's, let's focus specifically on method one. So <clears throat> I'm actually not loving this one for method one, but if I do use method one, I got to take each of these and solve them for y equals mx plus b. Remember that was our first step we wrote down. So how do I get this y equals? I'm going to add the 2x on both sides. 3y is equal to, how about 2x plus 6? To undo multiplying. I saw people doing this on the test. This needs to stop. We do not undo multiplication through subtraction. That makes me really sad. To undo multiplication, we will divide everything by the 3. So we get y is equal to uh, 2 thirds x plus 2. We'll get back to that in a minute. Uh, the second one to get it in y equals mx plus b. We are going to solve for y, so we're going to move the 8x. Negative 12y is equal to negative 6x minus 24. To get that in mx plus b, we're going to divide both sides. Not Do not add 12 to undo multiplication. To undo multiplication, we divide not by just the 12, by the negative 12. And everything gets divided. So what does that do? Well, negative 12, negative 12 leaves us with positive y is equal to negative 6 over negative 12. Negative negative makes that positive. 6 and 12 can be reduced. So 6 over 12, you need to know both are divisible by 3. So we end up with positive 2 over, my brain is not working, 3, 6, 9, 12. All right, that works. Not done though, am I? <clears throat> okay, how about dividing top and bottom by 6 to make that 1 half? And last, a negative divided by a negative makes that positive 2. Something's just not working out the way I expected. Give me a second. 8. Why did I write a 6? Some of you are screaming at your screen like, what is your problem, you idiot? All right. This was not supposed to be a 6. This was supposed to be an 8. See, I'm not perfect either. So 8, 8. Fix that here. Sorry about that. 8 over 12. By 4, there we go, gives us 2 thirds x plus 2. Awesome. Some of you already noticed something. Just be patient. I want you to see what happens when we graph these. The first one I will graph, um, just to keep life interesting, I'll graph the first one in red. Okay. Uh, that will have a y-intercept of 2 and a slope of up 2 over 3. If I wanted to go backwards, I could go down 2 and back 3. And there is our first line. Our second line has a y-intercept. And just to keep things interesting, I will do this one in purple. It has a y-intercept of 2 and a slope of up 2 over 3. I could also go down 2 and back 3. I'm going to draw my second line. And that is y equals 2 thirds x plus 2. Uh, so what's my solution? <laughs> right? The question is, right, we want to find the point that these lines have in common. So if I look at this, what point do they have in common? Well, this point, this point, this point, this point. Any point they have, they have in common. So when they are the same line... What does that mean? How many solutions? A lot of times, a lot of books will say many solutions. I think that's weak because it's not just like, oh my gosh, there's a bunch of them. They're going on forever. So what we do is we would say infinite solutions. It's not that they have a lot. They definitely have more than one. 
They're not parallel, so they are not, you know, not crossing. They cross everywhere. So we would say infinite solutions. And that's what I would want on the test. What will the homework do? Well, this. Because it's not that they have every point in common, because right here's a point, 3, 0. They don't have 3, 0 in common. They do have 0, 2 in common. So what we do is we say any point they have, they have in common. How do we write that? We would say that the solution is any point x, y, such that, or given that, or if we know that it falls along the line, y equals 2 thirds x plus 2. It is any point, given that it falls on that line, will be a solution. Example four. Let's graph this sucker. Okay. Solve for y. That's step one. So I'm going to subtract the x and get 4y is equal to negative x minus 8. Dividing both sides by 4. y is equal to negative x over 4 minus 2. We'll get back to that. Next one. Solve for y. We're going to subtract the 3x. 2y is equal to negative 3x plus 6. To undo the multiplication, divide everything by the 2. And we get y is equal to negative 3 halves x plus 3. first equation has a y-intercept of negative 2 and a slope of down 1 and to the right 4. Approximately looking something like this. I'm not being very exact at this point. The second one has a y-intercept of 3 and a slope of down 3 over 2. question is, is this where they cross? Well, you have to be really careful. Down 3 over 2, they haven't crossed. Down 3 over another 2, they do cross right there. What is that point? Well, 1, 2, 3, 4 on the x, negative 3 on the y. So write your answer as 4, negative 3. Step 1, solve both equations. Step 2, graph them. Step three, find that point they have in common. Step four, write your answer as a point. Next one, 5x minus 3y equals 9. How about solve for y? Move the x. Negative 3y is equal to how about negative 5x plus 9. We undo multiplying by negative 3 by dividing everything by a negative 3. That gives us y is equal to negative divided by negative makes that a positive. And 9 divided by negative 3 makes that negative 3. There's our first equation. Second one, solve for y. Move the x to the other side. 2y is equal to negative x plus 7. Divide both sides by 2. And y is equal to negative x over 2 plus... Huh, that doesn't simplify, does it? So we're left with 7 halves. We're left with, or if you like your decimals better, 3.5. Can we graph this? Well, maybe. I need a little more clean space here. Sorry about that. So here's what I'll do. <clears throat> I know I can graph the first one. The first one has a y-intercept of negative 1, 2, 3, and a slope of up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, over 1, 2, 3. I could go again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, over 1, 2, 3, and that gives me a couple points. 
to solve this. Uh, my second one has a y-intercept of 3.5. So literally that's 1, 2, 3, and a half. That is not cool. Uh, and then from there we go down 1 and over 1, 2. Down 1 and over 2. So will these lines cross? Yes. I don't know if that's where they cross. I'm thinking if they cross, they might cross at, it looks like maybe 3 comma 2. I don't know. Could we check it? Could we see if that's the solution? Well, let's check. 5x minus 3y equals 9. 5 times x minus 3 times y should equal 9. Does 15 minus 6 equal 9? 9 equals 9. Yay! Does that mean that's our answer? Remember, it has to work for both. So let's check. x plus 2y equals 7. x was 3 plus 2 times 2 equals 7. Does 3 plus 4 equals 7? Sure does. That is our solution. But this is to illustrate again the limitations of graphing. See, this would be really hard to do by hand. I could do this with technology. Uh, what was it? 5x over 3 minus 3. I could do that. Graph 5x Let's see if it'll behave. 5x over 3 plus 3. There was our first equation. I don't feel like that's right. What was it? 5x over 3. Oh, it's minus 3. That's why. So 5x over 3 minus 3. Come on, behave. There we go. That looks better. And then our second one was negative one half x or negative x over two. And then it was plus seven halves. Not cool, right? But the technology will go, I got no problem. Put the y intercept at three halves. Go down one over two, down one over two, down one over two. And look, do these lines cross? Well, they cross at one, two, three, comma, two. But this is limited. Like I said, this is where this is not going to be our only method. If we're stuck with graphing, graphing is going to fail us because sometimes the y-intercepts aren't nice. Sometimes the solutions are not even whole numbers. This solution could be a decimal. So graphing has its limitations. Last one. y equals negative x plus 3. 5x minus y equals 27. This is nice. This is ready to graph. Negative x plus 3 has a y-intercept of, oh, 1, 2, 3, and a slope of down 1, right 1. Down 1, right 1, down 1, right 1, down 1, right 1. Some of you are like, why is he making this so small? You will see. Five x minus y equals negative twenty-seven. Okay, we're going to solve that over here. We're going to move the x. And then we got to divide by the negative to get y is equal to. 5 over 1x plus 27. That's cool. We got a y-intercept of freaking 27, right? So that's 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. Lovely. And then from there, we're going up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 over 1. That is not cool. Do these lines cross? Well, going to the right, they get further away. So this is one where you'd have to go, okay, I can go up 5 and right 1, or I can go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and back 1. 
So these lines are going to cross. But let's agree. Graphing has its limitations. This is not going to be an easy answer to find graphing it by hand. So the good news is there's other methods. And this is kind of where this leads in. Uh, could I use technology on this one? Sure. Negative x plus 3. What was it? Negative x plus 3. I'll behave. <clears throat> Negative x plus 3. We had no problem with that. And then we had freaking 5x plus 27. Do these lines cross? It doesn't say, oh yeah, okay. Oh yeah, they do. It's about right here. What is that point? Well, I can actually see that here. That looks like it's 1, 2, 3, negative 4, and up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So I'm going to say, I think, could I check it? Sure, I could plug it in and see if that is the solution. But once again, the answer could be a decimal. I don't know. Okay, so graphing has its limitations. Why do we do it? Once again, if I was wanting to show people, this would be a great visualization to show us where these two cross. But would I graph this by hand? Heck no. So that's going to lead us into our next section. Because really this method is set up for what? Well, I had a y equals. Remember I said, oh, that's my bread and butter. If I already have a y equals or x equals, that will be set up to do substitution. And that will be our next section. So section 4.2 picks up right where we left off. We decided that this question was not fun to do by graphing. So we're going to try substitution. Step one, <clears throat> we need to get either x equals or y equals. I'm going to recap and just say, I don't like to use substitution unless this is done. Then I love substitution. Look at this question. We start off with y equals. That is ready for substitution. I can take this negative x plus 3 and I can substitute it. Where? Into the other equation in place of its y. That would be step 2. We are going to substitute the equation into the other equation. So that x plus 3 replaces that y. So it becomes 5x minus, this is wrong, don't put it like this, it's minus the group negative x plus 3 equals negative 27. Okay, we substituted that x plus 3 in place of the y right there. Now what? That's why I put and solve. What's the whole point of this? I now have an equation with one variable. I can distribute and get 5x plus x plus 3 equals negative 27, and I can continue solving. Like terms, 6x plus 3 equals negative 27. Subtract 3. 6x equals negative 30. Divide, and x equals negative 5. Is that what we got last time? x equals negative 5? No. I misread it a little bit, didn't I? So this is where, like I said, the graphing has its limitations. So, oh, well, uh oh, negative 4, 7 didn't work. It's supposed to be negative 5. Huh. Let's keep going. What do I do with that? Uh, by the way, it was all step 2. What do I do with that negative 5? Well, step 3, we substitute the number into what? Either equation. And solve. So I'm going to put this negative 5, if you don't mind, into that top equation. y is equal to negative negative 5 plus 3. Negative negative 5, y is equal to 5 plus 3, y is equal to 8. Is that our answer? No, 
That's why we have step four. Make sure that you write your answer as a point if you want full credit. X comma Y. So in this, that was all step three right there. So in this, our final answer is X comma Y. By the way, did we get that Y value right? No, I misread it. It's not 5, 7. It's 5, 8. Is that our solution? Man, I'm pretty sure we could check. I'm going to do that here on the side. If I checked, we just got negative 5, 8. Then that would be y is equal to, let's see, 8 is equal to. Negative negative 5 would be 5 plus 3. 8 equals 8. And it also must work for the other one. So 5x minus y, 5 times negative 5 would be negative 25. Minus y would be minus 8. Row, row. Did I mess up somewhere? 5x plus y. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to think about this. Because this didn't work, did it? Huh. Give me a second. Negative x plus 3. Ha 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 ha. Oh my gosh. <gasps> Hopefully you got a good eraser. This is going to happen sometimes. And it's, I could pretend like I did this on purpose. But when I distributed the negative, that 3 was supposed to become a negative 3. So what does that do if that's a negative 3? Well, then this would be a negative 3. Which means we wouldn't subtract 3 on both sides. We would add 3. Highlight all my mistakes. That would give me 6x is equal to, how about negative 24? And negative 24 divided by 6 would be negative 4. I actually did read it right, didn't I? Shame on me. So it is negative 4. Let's see if 7 still shows up. Okay? All right. So we got negative 4. We're going to plug in a negative 4. I'm going to highlight this a different color. Okay? So instead of a negative 5, we're going to plug in a negative 4. Negative negative 4 makes that a positive 4. And 4 plus 3, y is equal to 7. So our answer is officially negative 4, comma, 7. I shouldn't be so arrogant. So I would check this again. Negative 4, 7. 7 is equal to negative negative 4. 7 is equal to 7. Now it should work for the other one, right? <clears throat> we said negative 4, 7. So 5 times negative 4 is negative 20. Minus 7 is negative 27. Verify that it works for both. All right. Let's keep going. <coughs> this one is definitely set up for substitution. I see people that sit there and mess with this and try to graph this. And I definitely don't want to graph this. This would have a y-intercept of 26 over 5. Ugh, right? So what are we going to do? Well, step one is already done for us. y is equal to 2x. That's ready. We're going to substitute that 2x where? In place of the y in the other equation. So what does this become? 3x plus 5 times, in place of y, we put equals 26. 3x plus 10x equals 26. 13x equals 26, therefore x must equal 2. That's all step 2. Please don't stop at this point. Remember, this is really the reason why we had the first section, was that we understand this is not our solution. This is not a point. 
you need to, step three, take that two and plug it in. Where? It doesn't matter which one. I'm going to choose the bottom one. Why? Because that is a much easier x to plug in for. In place of that x, we put a two so that y equals four. So we're thinking two, four. Step four, let's check that. Our answer should be two comma four. Don't forget that you can check it. If I just plug it into the beginning, I get six plus 20 is 26. And on the other one, I get four is equal to two times two is four. Okay. Almost done on this one. <clears throat> This one, see, people freak out and they're like, oh my gosh, I don't have a y equals. Okay, but step one is still already done for us. Instead of a y equals, we have a x equals. So what can I do with this? I can substitute this negative 1 minus y in place of the x, because it's what the x equals. So we are substituting that into the other equation. So 2 times x plus 5y equals 7. Substitute and solve makes it negative 2 minus 2y two plus 5y equals 7. Combine like terms. 3y equals 7. Add the 2. 3y equals 9. And dividing y equals 3. Still not done. That's the y value. How do I get the x value? Take either equation. I'm going to take the bottom one. Negative 1 minus y. Negative 1 minus 3. Negative 4. Then last, we write our answer as a point. Negative 4, comma, 3. Why didn't the 3 go first? Because it's x, comma, y. Let's keep going. Another one where I have x equals, right? Step one is already done for us. So I can take that 5 minus 2y and substitute that into the other equation for x. So it becomes 2 times x, 5 minus 2y, plus 4y equals 6. Don't forget, all we did was substitute this in here we have to bring the rest of the equation down. Step two is to substitute and solve 10 minus 4y plus 4y equals 6. Negative 4y plus 4y zeroes out, and I'm left with 10 equals 6. What does this mean, right? How do I solve this? There's no y's left. How are we going to solve this? What the freak do we do here, right? Okay. If you're not sure, <clears throat> we could verify this by graphing. If I took that first equation, and I solve for y, x minus 5 is equal to negative 2y, divide everything by negative 2, I don't feel like graphing this. I could look at it with technology, but I have what? Negative 1 half x plus 5 halves. Not fun. Second equation. If I solve that for y, 4y is equal to negative 2x plus 6. Reducing that, I get negative 1 half x plus another fraction, 3 halves. I'm hoping you don't have to graph these to see what our solution is. These two points have the same slope, different y-intercepts. These two, these two equations are parallel, which means what? They will have no point in common. They will have no solution. So what does this look like visually?
right? What does this look like algebraically? 10 equals 6. They're not equal. When I get two things that are not equal, like a equals b, 10 equals 6, 0 equals 4, our solution will be that the lines are parallel or that there is no solution, no point in common. <coughs> All right. Next. What I don't like about this example is that step one is not done. That's not cool. So we're actually going to have to do that this time. We have to solve for x or y. Pick one. Do I want to solve for this x? Short answer is no. Because if I add the y and I have to divide by 3, I don't want to deal with fractions. So if I'm going to have to solve for an x or a y, I would like there to be a 1. A 1y, so a 1y or 1x. I see a 1 right here. Unfortunately, it's negative. But I think that's the best we're going to get. So if I solve this for y, we will subtract the 3x. Negative y is equal to negative 3x plus 4. Dividing by negative 1. y is equal to positive 3x minus 4. I can use that now. I can substitute y equals 3x plus 4, I can put this all in place of the y in the other equation. Okay? Remember, I don't like to use substitution unless the step is already done. We still can, just not as easy as some other methods. Okay? So if I substitute that into the other equation, I get negative 9x plus 3 times, what's y? Equals negative 12. Negative 9x, distribute, plus 9x, minus 12, equals minus 12. Negative 9x plus 9x, those zero out, leaving me with negative 12 equals negative 12. How do I solve for x and y? They all just disappeared. Well, guys, what we do is this. There is no way of solving this. You have to know what this means. A lot of you are yelling at your screen, no solution, no solution, no solution. I'll give you a hint. I'm going to take this other equation, negative 9x plus 3y, and I'm going to solve that for y equals. I would do that by adding 9x and get 3y is equal to 9x minus 12. And then if I divide everything by 3, I get that y is equal to 3x minus 4. What do you notice about these equations? They are the same line. And that means our answer is not no solution, right? They have a solution. Negative 12 equals 12. They're not different like the last one. So what answer would I want for this? This would be infinite solutions. Remember, what would this look like if I graph this? Here would be the first line. Here would be the second line. They're the same line. So what does that mean? They will have infinite points in common. How will they have you do it in the homework? X comma Y such that, and then we can write any of the equations. Y equals 3X minus 4. Any point along that line they will have in common. Uh, by the way, this is not my favorite method for this. And so what this is going to do is it's going to lead us into our last method because this was kind of a pain when step one wasn't done for us. So when we get past section 4.2, we're going to say, well, maybe substituting isn't always best. Let's agree substituting is great when we already had an x equals or a y equals. But when it's not done, it kind of is a pain. So that will lead us to our third method, which we've already learned by elimination. And we're going to look at this example and see how much easier it is using elimination. Let's go ahead and jump right into it, because heck, why not? It's right here. So if I look at these two, remember step one for elimination is I need to get either x or y to cancel out. How does that happen? 
they must be the same number but opposite signs. Well, currently, all of these are opposite but they're not the same number. I could make them the same number. For instance, let's take the x's. I got a 3 and I got a 9. I could make the 3 and the 9 both into a 9. Oh, and we do this only through multiplication. Because I'll have some people do this go, sweet, add 6x. No, 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 no. That's not going to, that's going to make a mess all over everything. No, no, we just need to take this and to make that a 3 into a 9, we're going to take that whole equation and multiply it times 3. So that 3x times 3 makes that a 9x. That minus y times 3 makes it a minus 3y. That 4 times 3 makes it a 12. That is step 1. These equations are now set up so that the x's will eliminate. Step 2. Combine. Cancel. And solve. These can combine. Negative 9x plus 9x cancels. 3y minus 3y cancels, and negative 12 plus 12 cancels. Okay, that's weird. What am I left with? Well, when they all cancel, I'm left with nothing. What mathematically stands for nothing? How about zero? On the right side, I'm left with zero. Notice, just like before, where I had, what, 12 equal 12, here I get zero equals zero. Both sides are the same, which means we have the same solution infinite solutions. They are the same line. Okay? I will list out the other steps if we had gotten a number here. Those of you who hate substitution, step three, we have to use it anyway. We still have to substitute, if we had a number that we got here, substitute the number into either equation and solve. And last, once you have both points, make sure that you write your answer as a point, x comma y. Okay. <clears throat> this one, we're going to get a solution, so that's good. And I also like this one because guess what? Step one is already done for us. What variable already eliminates? We got a negative y, we got a positive y. They are the same number, but opposite. So step two, we can solve this by combining. What is x plus x? What is positive y minus y? And what is 5 plus 3? Don't forget to substitute and, or combine, cancel, and solve. So we still have to divide to get that x is equal to 4. Is that our answer? Short answer is no. We have to still take that number and we still have to substitute. So that was step two. Step three, it could go into either equation. So x plus y is five, four plus y is five. If I subtract the four, y equals one. If I had plugged it into the other one, y should have still equaled one. Do not forget step four to write your answer for full credit as a point x comma y and we could check this answer does 4 plus 1 equal 5 and does 4 minus 1 equal 3 this is the point that these two lines have in common <clears throat> this is not nice this I probably wouldn't even use elimination. But I want to, just to kind of reiterate and show you how this works, <clears throat> if I want to use elimination, I need the x's and y's in standard form. <clears throat> so what I need to do is get all the x's and y's on one side. So I'm going to take this y plus 11 and I'm going to move the y over. And get 11 is equal to 2x minus y. That's in standard form. I could think of that as 2x minus y equals 11. 
Doesn't really matter. Either are fine, but I want that in standard form. <clears throat> Second one, are the x and y's on the same side? No. Minus the y. 5x minus y equals 26. Those are now in standard form. Are they ready to eliminate? Well, line them up. 5x minus y equals 26. 2x minus y equals 11. Those are not ready to cancel. The y's almost are though, right? Look, they're both a negative 1. If we could just make one of them positive, everything would eliminate. <clears throat> How do we do that? Pick one, top or bottom, your choice. Hopefully you said bottom, because that's what I'm going to choose. <clears throat> and to make it change signs, we are just going to multiply that times negative 1. <clears throat> that will change everything. That will make that 2x into a negative 2x. That will make the y into a positive y. That will make the 11 into a negative 11. Okay? All right, I'm running out of space. Let me see. I'm going to cheat a little bit. All right, you shrink up a bit. All right. So where were we at? Um, negative 2x plus y equals negative 11. What do I need to do to the top equation? Nothing. The y's were already to cancel. So bring it over. <clears throat> 5x minus y equals 26. I just can't catch a break here, right? Let's see. There. Equals 26. That is step one. Step one sucked this time. Okay? This won't always be the easiest way. It's just a way. But now that we have it set up, the y's will cancel and leave us with 3x is equal to 15. Substitute, combine, I'm sorry, combine and solve gives us that x equals 5. Please don't think you're done. This is not the answer, is it? You still have to solve for y. We have to plug this into one of the equations. Preferably if I have a y somewhere that's positive. How about 5x is equal to y plus 26. Because 5 times 5, or 25, is equal to y plus 26 is pretty easy to solve. If I subtract the 26, I get that y is equal to negative 1. What's our answer? Make sure you write your answer as a point 5 comma negative 1. Okay, a few more examples and we're done. <clears throat> this is more like what you would see on the test. I'm not going to try to give you a bunch of crazy ones. Um, but let's agree, this still is not ready to eliminate. We need to pick a variable to get rid of. X or Y. Doesn't matter. I would hope some of you might choose Y. And the reason we might do that is 2 and 3 are smaller than 2 and 5. And it's easier to work with smaller numbers. So you just need to go, okay, 2 and 3 need to cancel. We need to make them both the same number. Couldn't we make them both a 6? <clears throat> that would just be the top equation times 2, the bottom equation times 3. Unfortunately, this won't work, though. Here's why. A lot of people will do this. Don't forget to multiply the 15 times 2. And the same on the bottom. <clears throat> And then they just cross these out. And that makes me really sad. Because 6 plus 6 is not 0. We forgot that not only do they have to be the same number, but they need to be opposite. Which means one of these needs to be negative. So what if we made that 2 a negative 2? Well, then this would have been a negative 4x, a negative 6y, and a positive 30. What does that do? Well, now our y's are opposite, so they cancel. And this leaves us with 11x equals 33. This was all step one up here. This combined and solved is step two. Dividing by 11, <clears throat> x equals 3. Step three, what am I going to do with that 3? Substitute and solve. Where? Doesn't matter. Either equation. I'm going to choose the bottom one. Why? 
y is smaller. We get 15 plus 2y equals 1. Subtract. 2y is equal to negative 14. And y is equal to negative 7. Do not forget step 4. Step 4, write your answer as a point 3 comma negative 7. Almost there. This is not ready to cancel. They're not the same number. So pick one, x or y. I'll do x's this time. Smaller numbers. I got a 2 and a 4. I could make them both a 4. I would just need to make the top one not just a 4, but a negative. All right, so what's that going to do here? That's going to make that 2x into a negative 4x, the 4y into a negative 8y, and that 5 into a negative 10. The second one I didn't need to change. It was perfect just the way it was. But things start to get weird, right? Our goal was for the x's to cancel. Good news is negative 4 and positive 4 cancel. What's a little weird is it also do the y's, right? So what are we left with on the left side? What does this mean? Same thing it did before, right? If they're not equal, then that means if I were to graph these, these lines would be parallel. They would have horrible y-intercepts. But if I graphed the first one, it would be y is equal to negative 1 half x plus 5 fourths. If I graphed the second one, it would be negative 1 half x minus 9 eighths. Ugh. But the lines would be parallel. So we would have no solution. We would have a contradiction. Negative 1 half plus 5 fourths. Let's see. <clears throat> Negative 1 half x plus, I think it was 5 fourths. And uh, negative 1 half x minus 9 eighths. Uh, negative 1 half x minus 9 eighths. When are these lines going to cross? They never get any closer, any further apart. They have no solution because they are parallel lines. Okay, last couple, just to recap a couple things. Um, we This is not set up yet for elimination. And so we freak out and go, oh, it's so horrible. Okay, what makes this question hard? Well, it's got fractions, right? Could we clean that up? So it's not really in that AX plus BY equals C where all these are whole numbers. So what if I just took that bottom equation and I multiplied it by its LCD, just like we did before. The only thing making this a fraction is this dividing by 2. So what if I multiplied everything times 2? Well, 2x would become 4x. 3 halves times 2 just becomes 3y equal to 12 times 2, 24. The other equation was 4x plus 3y equal 10. Don't start crossing stuff out. These are not canceling. Yet, what do we need to do? Well, one of them needs to become negative. I don't care which. Uh, maybe we could have used that as a negative 2. I'm just going to take the bottom equation and multiply it times the negative 1 so that when I bring it down, that makes the 4x negative, the 3y negative, and the 10 negative. Now we can start zeroing stuff out. Cancel, cancel. 0 equals 14. No, it doesn't. This is also no solution. When they're not equal, no solution. Okay? When it's a fraction, clear it using multiplication. I probably wouldn't test you with this, but it definitely could show up in the homework. It could show up in word questions, so get yourself prepared. 
last but not least. This could show up. Do decimals show up in real life? Absolutely. What do you do? Right? Go home and cry. No, no, let's figure this out, right? What can we do if I don't like decimals? Well, I could multiply everything times 10 and move the decimal over. What would this become? Well, 5x plus 24y, not loving that, equals 42. The same one times 10 would give us negative x or negative 1x if you'd prefer plus 15y equals 51 still not loving it but i could now solve this and not worry about those decimals so don't let that freak you out we need either the x's or y's to cancel out of these two i'm definitely liking the x's they're smaller of the two right so i will take the bottom equation and all I really need to do is take that bottom one and multiply it times 5 to make that negative 5x plus whoa 50 and 25 how about 75y equals 51 5x plus 24y equals 42 the x's that's all step one because now the x's will cancel 99y is equal to 93, so we got 93 over 99. Is it wrong? I don't know. Let's double check our work real quick. So let's see. 5, 24, 42, liking that. Negative 1, 15, 51, liking that. Ah, I forgot to multiply the 51 times 5. Shame on me. This 51 times 5 should have made that. How about 225? Hopefully some of you are screaming at your screen. 225 plus 42 would be 267. And that divided by 99. Still doesn't look fun. 267 over 99. Let me see. 267 over 99. Oh, that is not fun. Is it right? <clears throat> Let's double check. I did all this times 5. Negative 5, 75, 220, 255. Quit trying to do mental math. 51 times 5 is 255. 255 plus 42 would be 297. 297 divided by 99. I like that a lot better. Y equals 3. What do I do with that 3? Plug it in. Where? Either one. I'm wanting to solve for x. I could choose the bottom one since it's a 1x. I think I'm going to choose the top one just because I like the x that is positive. What's y? So 5x plus 72 equals 42. Solving that. 5x equals negative 30, and x equals negative 6. So, our solution, that was 1, let's see, 2, this was step 3, step 4, write your answer, is negative 6, comma 3. Interesting. Is it right? Now I could plug it in. What I'm curious about is, yeah, why don't we do that? So negative 6, 3. I'm going to plug it into the original equations. 0.5 times x. So 0.5 times x, which was negative 6. Plus 
plus 2.4 times y, 2.4 times 3, and I believe this was supposed to equal what? Was it 4.2? 4.2? 0.5 times x, double check, make sure I'm not crazy. Let's see, is that 4.2? Interesting. The second equation, negative 0.1 times x. So negative 0.1 times x, negative 6. I should put some parentheses in there. So negative 0.1 times negative 6 plus 1.5 times y y was 3 is it supposed to be 5.1 says it's going to be 5.1 this is our solution and you can check them this is it for a really a huge chunk of chapter four so uh, hopefully you got that down and uh, we will be building on this very soon